What's going on everybody? Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is gonna be diving into responsive design. I did this on a live stream over on Twitch. If you wanna go check that out, there'll be a link in the description to follow my channel and stay tuned for more videos to come. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Reach any questions you have regarding responsive design. I'll do plenty more of these videos. If you wanna follow along and just mess around with me, you're very much welcome to. Uh, it's just gonna be a really kind of fun way to dig around XD and learn more about it in general. I mean, I, I'm very much curious to see the differences between messing with Sketch the entire time and now kind of diving into a new tool as well. Uh, and seeing how this has just progressed being an Adobe program as well. So using the resource I have here, I'm just gonna mess around with web first. And then I think really the plan is just gonna be to do responsive design and kind of pull in a couple of different things with that and how we can utilize different elements and then expand beyond that and see what other things we can do in the meantime to see how the tool is different in comparison to Sketch and Figma and the ups and downsides of both. And then from there, we'll just continue to pull it all together too. So I've heard a lot of great things about the resizing and responsive aspects of XD in general. And from there, we'll just kind of experiment with different components to stretch them out and kind of see where things can go. And then, um, Let's see where, like, see where the limitations can get to as well, because I know that they have incorporated other aspects of prototyping and things like that into here. So, I'm gonna start it off first getting a couple of those upboards down. So we've got a web version, we've got presets over here, which is helpful. Da, 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 da. Um, this is one thing I've already noticed, and you already have an upboard tool selected in XD, it automatically creates an upboard for you if you just click anywhere else, which maybe that's helpful. And I'll kind of box it out first, and then from there we'll start to add in the content as well on top of that. So if I do rectangle, so as every other tool, it's R, which is helpful. Makes life a lot easier there. Um, and we will fill this in with a non-white. Um, I'll just go gray boxes for the time being. So we'll probably have logo over here and holding shift and option. I can duplicate that guy and see exactly how many pixels there. Stretch that out. This will be kind of our navigation system. Then spacing. Now I've honestly referenced Google's material design to figure out the exact spacing from the edge of the pages to like the grid system and, and whatever else. Um, and that's been the easiest guide I've found online, personally. I'm sure there are other ones out there that uh, you guys may be able to reference, but I think this is a really unique one to have in general. And I would highly recommend to check this out, either here at Image, or I might even do some text in here as well. Um, let's just do, let's just create a portfolio. So we're gonna have logo, navigation, header, you could even space it out even more. Obviously the initial view itself is just gonna be for the web anyway. So we're already gonna have all a base stage of what that's gonna be. So when people come in and see the fold, they're already gonna have, um, they're already gonna have to see exactly that whole space. So I'm trying not to take up too much vertical space, but I would love to use some text in here, an overlapping image to my text here, just because I like to do this tactic. I've done this a little bit in general of kind of trying to see ways to break up the typical fold that we always have. Okay, so it's command and bracket to go backwards. Helpful to know. Uh, we will just make that black as black. What I'm thinking in this image itself is just gonna be highlighting a few of the work I've done. So you get a quick overview of what that is um, on top of that. And then I think from there, we'll just have some running projects below this, below the fold. And then I think what I would do just before the fold itself is, so I have a hard time with this and I've done this in my own portfolio. I feel like you either do, 
your three top projects in here or you also put in your services too. For example, I've done uh, a meetup and a podcast and those are all related to help me kind of grow uh, in general. How do you, can you not distribute in this? Context, we're gonna have a hero image, we're gonna have services right here and more stuff in the home page as well. Try not to make it too condensed, condensed in general, there's no reason to, but I think to have stuff like that is gonna be super beneficial. And then, and here, we'll have a logo, navigation, um, one unique trip, trick, one unique trick that I've seen people have been doing lately on their portfolios is within their navigation, they'll obviously have the about page and whatnot, but they'll also have jumping off point to like call to action. So they might have set up some type of WhatsApp. People have been able to set it up so clients can go to their website, click on WhatsApp and literally send them a direct message about something they may have seen on their website, which I think is a really cool way of like breaking the fold of this whole typical, you know, email process and all the other stuff that goes on. And there's this little feature over here that automatically resizes the box like you can in Sketch and Figma, which is helpful. But as I mentioned, this is gonna be navigation over here. And I think what I would just like consider is just starting to like add in a couple of those ideas. So if we reduce this size to something else entirely, um, we could start adding in lists of like pages we'll need. You know, obviously video is a big thing. So if you have the ability to create a video, then definitely create a video and put, plug that in here. Like why not have something interactive going on uh, for them to kind of dive into? You know, obviously video is a big thing. So if you have the ability to create a video, then definitely create a video and put, plug that in here. Like why not have something interactive going on? Now I feel much better because now we have a bit more context in general about how to do the responsive design. And then from there, we can kind of start to mess with it. So when we go to like, from a, like from a web standpoint to an iPad standpoint, there's not gonna be a gigantic change in general. Uh, that's pretty straightforward, obviously, because you're just really condensing things in a small standpoint. And then from there, but when we get to a mobile screen, it's a very different story in how we actually go about uh, organizing all these different elements at the same time. Oh, interesting, okay. So if I hold command, things will shift depending on where they're at. Now I haven't added any pinning in here, to be fair. So that would be why that doesn't work as seamlessly. On this, I would basically keep ex exactly everything the same on an iPad. I would not try and dramatically change anything. Take the navigation, implement a hamburger menu inside of here so that things are a lot more simple. Um, and then you can actually combine your, uh, you can combine your logo and the navigation in the one element as well. From a general aspect, looking at this from a wider picture, we can see how that's all coming together from the web iPad and the phone going in there. And uh, I would love to continue to mess around with that and kind of see where that starts to go. But that's kind of my passive like responsive design and what that entails. Mm -hmm.